Hi there, this is Amaris from Tapilates Customer Support Team. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create the automation that tracks coupons from your store and attributes them to affiliates in Tapfiliate. So number one, this video assumes that you have done step one and step two of the coupon setup guide. This means that you have created a coupon in your e-commerce or SaaS platform. And number two, that you have also assigned that coupon to an affiliate in Tapfiliate. The third step is setting up the automation that will make that coupon trackable. And that's what we're going to be explaining here using Zapier. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so the first thing you'll do is name your Zap. This should be something descriptive so that it's easier for you to find a Zap and also manage it in the future. So for the purposes of this, we're going to say, okay, tracks affiliate coupons. Now we're going to set up our trigger event. So our trigger event is basically the event that happens that will set off an action that will send data to top affiliate and track that conversion. For the purposes of this test, we will be using Moonclerk. Moonclerk is a SaaS platform that allows people to accept payments and they do have coupon capabilities. Um, and those coupon capabilities are basically what we're going to use in this test. So for the trigger event, we're going to create, we're going to choose new payment. So what this means is that if a new payment takes place in Moonclerk, I want the next step to happen. So the next steps are mostly preliminary checks just to fetch information from Moonclerk, pick a Moonclerk account, And these checks are something you do whenever you set up an automation um, with Zapier. So just pick the forms that apply for your use case. And in this last step, we're going to be seeing if we can fetch some information. We're going to be using Moonclerk's um, example information for this test. So we can just say test anyway. or skip test, <laughs> and this will bring back the example payment data that we're going to use for this, um, this test. So we can continue. And the next step is going to be setting up the action that follows. And naturally that will be happening in Tapfiliate. And the event that we want to happen is to create a conversion in the case that a new payment takes place in Moonclerk. So we continue. We choose our Tapfiliate account from the list. And if you don't have one connected yet, you will be able to connect it in this step. And then we set up our action. So what we do in this field is that we're going to be filling in the information um, that we want to fetch from the first step in order to create the conversion in Tapfiliate in this second step. It's a lot easier than it looks. So for customer ID, we're going to be using the customer reference, which is available from the list of options here. See over here, customer reference. Once that's set up, we can move to the next. We can ignore referral code because this is not the attribution method that we're using. We're going to be using coupon. So if we scroll down and go to coupon, next we're going to look for the coupon field over here. And we can see it over here. It's empty right now. What this indicates is that no coupon was used in this particular example, but we can type it in over here for the purposes of this, um, for this test. So we have already assigned the coupon, coupon to an affiliate and we will be using that to track a conversion. We can ignore click ID. That's not something that we will use. Next, you will set up the amount. So this is the amount that we're going to be basing off the commission on. Um, over here, you want to look at the options and you'll see that there's two options. There is amount to decimal and a plain amount. Now, here you will want to use amount to decimal and I'll explain why. With amount to decimal, you can see it's 1150. With amount, there's no decimal point in the middle. So that means that we will track it over here at Tapiliate as 1150. Now, you of course don't want to <laughs> you don't want to pass that information like that. So make sure that you use the information that matches your prices exactly. So we're going to use amount to decimal. 
The next field is commission type. So for example, if you want to set up a lower commission type for conversions that use coupons, this is the place to do it. You can just set up the identifier here and it'll pass that identifier along with the request and you'll have a different commission rate for this specific conversion. But for the purposes of this test, we're not touching that. Now, external ID, we're going to be looking for the charge reference, which we can find over here, further down, charge reference. Next, we can set up metadata. Now, metadata is information that's very useful. You do not have to do this, um, that you want to be posted alongside the conversion. So for example, if I want to pass along customer metadata um, using this, I can just type in the key email and then pick from the list of options a, the email key, the email value, sorry. Um, next, you will click Continue. And here you will see, okay, a summary of the information that would be sent to Tapfiliate in the event that this action takes place. We can see that there's a customer ID, an external ID, an amount, metadata is set, and that the attribution method is currently coupon. So we're going to test and continue. And we can see that the test was successful. So a conversion was sent to Tefliate right now. What this means is that the test was successful and it posted a conversion to Tefliate. And we can see all the information that came back from that event. So we can see, okay, when it was created, the ID of that conversion, the program that it was registered on, the currency that was applied. So we can get a really good look at all the information regarding well, what this event was. So. Without further ado, we can turn on the tab and we're done. It's very, very simple to set up. You just need to link certain fields, make sure that everything aligns. Uh, if you already have scripts tracking, I would absolutely recommend that you use the same fields. So for example, if you have a charge ID in the external ID field, use that. If you have an email in the customer field, use that as well when you set up your SAP. Um, if you have any questions, just reach out to us over at Customer Support. We're more than happy to answer your questions. And uh, stay safe, guys. Hope you have a good day.